Many people throughout history have often questioned why certain things came to be. How a certain series of decisions by humanity, nature, or the universe came together to create something good, terrible, or everywhere in between. For the longest time, a sliver of land in the northwest United States came across the same line of questioning. What is this place? How is this possible? And why, why does this place defy all laws of nature? Today, national park rangers across this sliver of land can confidently answer those questions. This place is a flurry of life, from the largest mammals to the smallest microbes, a place stirred up by the bowels of a massive supervolcano, a place where beauty comes in the most unexpected ways. This place, of course, is Yellowstone National Park. This park is massive, so we're splitting our coverage of Yellowstone into two parts with a short video in between the two longer videos, covering some of the stuff most major documentaries skip over, so that you can get original, quality content from RAC, and not repeats of other info you may have already heard. Part 1 was about the history and geology of the park, see the card above or the link in the description, and Part 2 will be covering the immersive wildlife and the different areas of the park to visit. There are quite a lot, so let's get right into it! The easiest way to get to all the different places in Yellowstone is by traveling along the Grand Loop Road a figure eight path that totals 142 miles within the park. In addition to the loop, there are also five entrances into the park from all directions. Today we'll discuss the attractions as if we have started at the north entrance and are going clockwise around the park. The first of the five entrances at the park, the north entrance is located just south of the town of Gardner, Montana, and is home to the famous Roosevelt Arch dedicated by President Theodore Roosevelt himself on a visit to Yellowstone in 1903. The arch stands 50 feet high, and is an impressive sight for visitors entering the park from the north. After traveling south for a couple of miles, visitors will get their first taste of the grandeur of Yellowstone at Mammoth Hot Springs. Home to buildings such as the historic Mammoth Hot Springs Hotel and Fort Yellowstone, this area also showcases a rare hydrothermal feature known as the Travertine Terrace. This massive set of sloping steps of water are an amazing sight, and several boardwalks meander through the feature, providing views seen in only a select few other places in the entire world. Heading east from Mammoth takes visitors to the next major junction of Tower Roosevelt, at which visitors can head out of the park to the northeast entrance in the town of Cook City. Which, by the way, the road from Gardner to Cook City is the only road that is open year-round, and so if you're interested in driving through a part of Yellowstone in the winter months, this is the road where you can. The road to the northeast entrance also passes through the Lamar Valley, an excellent spot for viewing the park's elk and bison herds, which can cross park roads often, so be prepared for delays anywhere in the park due to these massive, intimidating, but interesting creatures. Continuing south on the Grand Loop Road from Tower Junction brings visitors to the feature the junction is named after, Tower Fall. This majestic waterfall drops 132 feet into the Yellowstone River from Tower Creek, which gets its name from the tower-like formation surrounding the canyon the waterfall descends into. The Yellowstone River is what follows the Grand Loop Road for 19 miles down to the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone, until the next junction, Canyon Junction, named after the aforementioned feature. Canyon is particularly famous for the beautiful Upper and Lower Yellowstone Falls, a pair of waterfalls framed by the canyon walls. The falls can be viewed from several points, but Artist Point and Inspiration Point are some of the best places to gaze at the tremendous force of water at work. From the canyon, the Loop Road continues to follow the Yellowstone River, passing through the Hayden Valley, another popular animal viewing spot, until an immense swath of blue appears on the horizon. This is Yellowstone Lake, the largest high elevation lake in North America and a major source for the Yellowstone River. Within the lake swim species like cutthroat trout, mountain whitefish, and red side shiners, a diverse variety of aquatic species for one of the most diverse places in the world. On the edge of the lake, the town known as Lake Village serves as a means to get to the east entrance of the park, which does not have a town directly at the park entrance, but is about 50 miles from the town of Cody, Wyoming, a well-known hub in the days of the Old West. Heading west from Lake Village, the loop continues around the western flank of Yellowstone Lake until it reaches West Thumb. What is West Thumb, you might ask? Well, it is actually several different things. It is part of the lake that branches out from the main body of water and looks like a thumb, therefore dubbed West Thumb, but it is also the name of the village along the road and the name of a nearby geyser basin. From West Thumb, visitors can access the south entrance, which goes down into the town of Jackson, the slightly less popular but just as beautiful Grand Teton National Park. But let's be honest, we talked about it in part one, and Yellowstone is world renowned for having these inside the park. You want to know about the geysers. Continuing along the road brings you to the largest concentration of geysers in the park and in the world, the upper, midway, and lower geyser basins. And in the upper geyser basin lies Old Faithful, perhaps the most famous geyser in the world. 
Luckily for you, the diligent park rangers at Yellowstone work around the clock to try to get the most accurate predictions for geyser eruptions throughout the day. So be sure to check the park website or stop by any one of the historic buildings in the Old Faithful area to check out the latest predictions. One of the most important buildings at Old Faithful is the Old Faithful Inn, built in 1904 and nearly destroyed during the 1988 Yellowstone fires, but still remains standing today as an iconic national park structure. Before we move on, here are a couple helpful tips for making sure you have the best possible experience with geyser watching at Yellowstone. Pick the right time. As was mentioned earlier, if you watch a geyser right after it has erupted, it's likely the geyser may not erupt for another couple of hours, so choose wisely when you are geyser watching. Arrive early. Having noted the previous tip, try to arrive around 15 to 20 minutes before the actual eruption, if you plan to get a good viewing spot. Geysers, especially Old Faithful, tend to amass sizable crowds during eruptions, and getting there at the last minute puts you in the back of the crowd. Finally, be aware of your surroundings. Geyser eruptions are fun to see, but make sure to stay back a reasonable distance so you don't get hit with scalding hot water. Most geysers have barriers protecting visitors from the spray, but regardless, just be prepared to back up if the wind changes direction suddenly, or the water goes higher than you think it will. With that out of the way, let's continue the tour. Heading north from Old Faithful brings visitors past a couple more geysers and other hydrothermal features, including the majestic Grand Prismatic Spring, before eventually reaching Madison Junction, in the west entrance to the park, with the town of West Yellowstone just outside the boundaries. From Madison, the last stop before arriving back at the starting point is Norris Junction. Norris is home to the Artist Paint Pots, a series of colorful springs just south of the junction, as well as the Museum of the National Park Ranger, a tribute to the many groups that have served America's national parks since the beginning of the parks themselves. Two final sites on the way from Norris to Mammoth Hot Springs are the Obsidian and Sheepeater Cliffs, two features just off the road in the sides of hills that were formed by the geological activity in the park, and created bemusing rock formations for visitors to ponder over. And we did it! All 142 miles of Yellowstone's Grand Loop Road, and some facts about the wildlife you can expect to see there along the way. We hope you enjoyed learning about what there is to do at Yellowstone. Make sure to check out part one of this video, where we discuss how the park came to be, and if you're planning a trip to Yellowstone in the future, we hope you were able to get some ideas from watching this video. Until next time, this has been RAC Adventures covering Yellowstone National Park.